Driving to the tourney. From arcade battles to online tournaments, the world of fighting games has always been intense and thrilling. Ladies and gentlemen, can I have your attention real quick? I won first place. I hope you guys have fun. You know, emotional victory, yes. Behind every victory is a hidden world of consequences. Got completely washed. That was a crazy wake up call. Because sometimes that video game stress can turn into something else. I'm Cello and I've been hosting esports tournaments since before it was called esports. Go! You know how frustrating fighting games can be. And that frustration, if you leave it unchecked, it turned into something worse. A man inputs gave me anxiety when I was younger, and that turned into facial tics. I used to stretch out my eyes as they seemed dry, and I would get that stress eye twitch that people get from time to time. Also, I press buttons on a controller in such a weird way that it actually destroyed my fingernails. Unfortunately, I still do that last one to this day. I wanted to make a video about how growing up with fighting games unintentionally messed me up mentally. I love fighting games. There's just something magical about loading up a game, figuring out how it all works, and then just going in and washing somebody. On top of that, there is something magical about going in and getting washed yourself. It sucks, but it also is dope. You know, I felt so much pressure to be the best at fighting games because of the extreme trash talking nature of growing up in the hood. Somebody told me that you could beat me, but they tricked you. Your girl said my hair stay up longer than your do. <laughs> And the competitive basis of fighting games didn't help that at all. Now I'm trying to figure out how to remedy all these ticks and mental anguish with, of all things, fighting games. Anik, boom. There's a multitude of studies that show that video games are bad for us. I've treated a number of children over the years who struggle with problematic video game uh, behaviors. I think one of the most important things to keep in mind is that the child will be able to tell you, I'm trying to not do this, but I can't stop. And I can't get myself to stop. I don't want to behave this way but I'm struggling. On the flip side, there's a whole bunch of studies that show that video games are good for us. Gaming has proven health benefits. Gaming actually develops the physical brain. The Columbia School of Public Health found gaming actually improved peer relationships and supported healthy social skills. Simple accessible games that can be played quickly can improve players' moods, promote relaxation, and even ward off anxiety. It's a mixed argument on the pros and cons of gaming. I'm a lead towards the pros, always. I was absolutely blessed to grow up with a thriving arcade scene that brought us the likes of Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, Killer Instinct, and so many others. Blessed, but also curse. USA! I still remember the first time I played Street Fighter 2. 1991 NYC and me and a neighborhood friend of mine were riding our bikes about four blocks away from my house He told me that they had a new arcade in the bodega there So we ride over we walk in and lo and behold Street Fighter 2 I was already a video game fan So I was intrigued about this like battle style game. I wanted to see what it had to offer I watched as some of the other kids played and I, my eyes are just scanning back and forth Trying to read the names as fast as possible as they were cycling through the characters I remember seeing Guile's name and thinking it was pronounced Gully So I called him Gully for a while and on top of that E Honda was the man that scratches and Chun Li was the girl who kicks I only had a quarter in my pocket So I waited my turn and finally when I was up I picked E Honda because he seemed easy enough to use I saw somebody like mashing the punch button to do the hundred hand slap So I was like, you know what? Let me rock with him I don't want to hear any masher jokes in the comments, so don't even start. Anyway, fighting game rules dictated you did whatever you needed to do to stay on because quarters were precious to us kids back in the days. Yo, I walked away in amazement after my game was done. Countless trips to that bodega later on and I found one of my mains in Blanca. He's mad fun to play and he just looks dope. I mean, he's a beast. Literally, he's a beast. In 1992, Mortal Kombat graced our lives. It was the realistic fighting game due to its uh, graphical style plus the fatalities. There was a video rental store about two blocks from my house. Shout out to Alpha Video. And they had they were the first ones to have Mortal Kombat in the neighborhood. So you know we were making a trip there. At this point, I'm making a trip south to play Street Fighter and a trip north to, to play Mortal Kombat. And there was a bunch of spots in the neighborhood that had different arcades. So if you wanted to play a specific game, you kind of had to trek around like a video game map. You know, mom and pop delis, pizza parlors, 
bakeries, video rental stores, all that. It was kind of glorious for us kids back in the day, going on a mission to play a game. So 1993, a year after Mortal Kombat comes out, right? And the bakery by my house has a, a new Street Fighter. It's the newest one, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, where you can play as Cammy, DJ, T-Hawk, and Phelong. Plus you can play as like Bison and Sagat, Vega, and Balrog and all that. So, you know, we were rocking with it. For me, it was all about Blue Blanca. Blue Blanca's the man. I mean, look, bro, he looks just, he just looks dope. So at this point, I'm playing two different fighting games, right? And they were similar enough, like, uh, Ryu's Hadouken was very similar to uh, Sub-Zero's Freeze and Johnny Cage's Shadow Kick was similar to Blanca's Charge Ball So it wasn't hard to jump one from the other The only difference was that Mortal Kombat had a physical block button and Street Fighter you hold back to block This was manageable as a kid. We already knew a ton of gameplay from different games, so there were no issues yet Killer Instinct <laughs> started to notice an issue when Killer Instinct came out. I love that game and the ridiculous 90 hit combos you can do. But and then we were playing the arcade and you had some players showing up and they were just straight up Super Saiyajins, yo. You legit had guys doing amazing combos, and if you didn't know how to break a combo, you were screwed. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The wicked demon has been slain. Join me, children, and let us rejoice in his eternal damnation. I liked and wanted to get good at Killer Instinct, but not dedicating the amount of time that I should have really put me in a loss column every time I went up against the, the players who dedicated their time to that specific game. My forte was Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat, and for a while it leaned heavily towards Mortal Kombat, you know, where I was, I was rocking in that and not so much Street Fighter, but I would go back and forth between them. But the real test was going to Chinatown Arcade. Chinatown Arcade is where pros were pros before pros were a thing in gaming. If you thought you were good in a game, you went to Chinatown Arcade to test the water. The careers of fighting game legends like Justin Wong were made there and so many others. Everybody knew about Chinatown Fair. He went for the lights again! X-Factor! Oh my god, are we grinding a new champion I here? I think this might be it, guys! As the king returns! As the Marvel God has returned to his throne! I think we're gonna see it! The return Hold on. of the king! I'm not even gonna knock it yet. I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna, oh my god, he just down it! takes it! So I go to Chinatown Arcade, I test the water, and I get absolutely humbled, right? Go home and be a family man. It really makes you think, yo, are you really good at this game or what? You really had to put in work to be good at a particular game, and if you didn't, when you went up against a player who dedicated that time to that particular game, that chopped you down. Like, you see a... a a, a solid player, pro player, whatever, doing an SPD like nothing. You're like, how is homeboy moving in a different light than me? Like on a different level, that's that's wild. That stress, that anxiety of like losing to a player who's just watching you, that starts to build up and it weighs on you and you don't really know how to manage that as a kid. Video games are supposed to be our stress reliever and they're causing even more stress. The fear of underperforming or trying to get these virtual achievements it causes stress and anxiety in some people. I mean, it did for me. Not not being on top all the time, that did it for me. So at this point, I got Street Fighter under my belt, Mortal Kombat, Killer Instinct, Tekken, Time Killers, Fatal Fury, Virtual Fighter, and there was a ton of others that I can't even recall right now. Just know that the market was saturated with fighting games, a ton of fighting games, and even more mechanics to learn. There was a lot that I skipped out on personally, like a lot of the 3D fighters I didn't really get into. Tekken I played super casually. 
VOA I didn't really get into. Soul Calibur, I got into it to a degree, but nothing like the 2D fighters. I just, I didn't want to have to learn this whole new system again. Armada has no shield. Armada has no shield. Weapon! Absolutely tearing through everyone today, Tove. Weapon is our evil. It helps being good at one game, and you might easily adapt to another. But just because you're good or great in one game doesn't mean you're going to be great at the other one. I don't think Leffen landed one jump over a Sonic Boom. Like, he jumps in the same spot every time. He doesn't know how to jump on Gao at all. He just sees a Sonic Boom and he jumps. He doesn't, he don't know the way to jump over the Booms. Or to jump on Gao, not jump over Boom. But he don't know the way to jump on Gao at all. This is, might be the only time a Gao has played the first of five and not gotten one boom jumped over. That's why I say Gao is one of those characters that they really gonna make a break if you wanna keep playing Street Fighter. Do you really wanna learn this? How to fight this? Or do you just wanna be like, I right, this game. Three, two, one, zero. Game over. Games were and still are magical to me. Competing in fighting games is always a thrill. At its core, it's always gonna be fun. I didn't stop playing these fighting games, but it did make me think about which one my quarter was gonna last longer in. So I had to devote time to that particular game. So I decided to focus on Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat. Those two were very interchangeable and kind of like casually play the others. I won't lie, focusing on Street Fighter kind of worked out for me. Still to this day, fighting games can be overwhelming. That's why I just focus on two, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate and Street Fighter VI. I wanted to get good in Mortal Kombat 1, I wanted to play Mortal Kombat 1, but I realized I don't have enough time, so I was like, you know what, I'll just watch from afar. Like, I'll casually jump into Dragon Ball Fighters. And I still play the older fighters, but I'm living it on time. Toasty! So when I do play, I kind of focus on the game that I want to get really good at. Honestly, there were so many good fighting games back in the days and I wanted to be good at all of them. I know now that that just wasn't gonna happen, but when I was younger, I was like, yeah, this is possible. So like I stretched myself thin across all those games. Not being great in any of them, just kind of good across all of them. But good wasn't enough to be top one in your game. I'm lucky to look back on it now and smile about that whole thing. But when I was younger, man, that was a blessing and a curse, like I said. You want to get good at a game and not suffer anxiety, stress, and burnout and all that? Focus on that game intimately. Play the other ones casually. When you feel like you're getting burnt out from the main game, throw it in the casual pile. Take one of the other casual games, throw that in your main. Boom, there you go. That's how you get good. You recycle that out. You swap it out. You can, you can always change out a game. Listen, you don't have to be the best at all the games at the exact same time. Switch it up. Trust me, it'll work out for you. I'm going to catch you next time. Go one up your world. Peace.